The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. Martin. All right, folks, welcome back to the Diagnostic Trading Hour here. I'm your host, Daryl Martin. And if you haven't noticed already, market moving uh, quite a bit. And if you have any questions right now, feel free to give me a call. Give me a call about your stocks, options, futures, forex, binaries, and spreads. And right now, let's look at the radio call in line. Give us a call 877-927-6648. Again, that's 877-927-6648. Six six four eight, and uh, we got the markets off of their highs from this morning. They moved quite a bit, gapped open. The move looks huge, and you know, in essence, it is huge based on the previous day's settlement. But the movement has not necessarily been exactly stellar based on just the the gap move that already happened. It moved up, moved down, moved up. So we'll see where it's going. Seeing a lot of strength starting to happen over in the uh, dollar and a couple things like that. So that might start putting some downward pressure on the stocks going into the close of the day. We'll see how it ends up. Right now, we got the S&P is up 25.75, actually up 26 points right now. We got the NASDAQ up just over 65 points. We got the Dow up 239, and we got the Russell up 20. Looking over at gold, it is up $13 on the day right now, and copper is up 2.3%, moving quite a bit. Silver is up 2.87%, um, one of the biggest movers of the day. Biggest mover of the day right now being natural gas down a whopping 4.7%. So almost 5% down right now on natural gas. Looking on over at our corn. Corn is down a percent, down eight, almost nine points now. We got soybeans down 19 points on the day. We got oil up a buck 18. And looking over at our currency pairs, we got the euro dollar down 28. We got the pound dollar down 10 pips. The Aussie dollar is up 92. So the dollar showing a weakness compared to the Aussie. But showing strength compared to most of the other pairs. U.S. yen right now is up 36. U.S. franc up 34. And U.S. Canadian uh, dollar showing quite a bit of weakness there. Down 54 pips on the day right now. So that gives you your quick market wrap. Looking on over at the news reports we had coming out this morning. And, uh, of course, then we'll hop into the deeper fundamentals. But uh, real quick, what do we got going on? Well, last night, obviously, a whole lot of nothing was happening. There was an Aussie dollar uh, report came out, but it was a minor report, not a big impact report. But we did have the uh, manufacturing PMI come in on the pound dollar, and that did have quite a bit of an effect on it right there. We can go in and we can look at that report. Let me pull up a simple minute chart here on the pound dollar, and uh, we'll go through that one real quick. And there we go. So, but yeah, you can sort of even look at this right here. I mean, it just sort of up and down on all these indices right here. So not, not anything major, really. Uh, NASDAQ actually lower than where it opened um, on the price today so at the opening bell there. And uh, most of them looking, you know, starting to turn down a little bit. But again, we'll have to check it out and see where it ends up at the end. And looking over here in our advanced decline, so starting to turn down a little bit as well. So let's go ahead and look at the pound right now. We'll go ahead and zoom in on that. And on the pound dollar... We had a pound dollar right there, and we had a report come out again at 4.30, 3.30 central time. And so we'll move on over here where we get that report to 3.30 central. And uh, the report came in on pound dollar again, manufacturing PMI, was actually better than expected. Despite that fact, the pound dollar went ahead and dropped. So usually you would think that would be good for the currency. But just based on everything that's going on, it actually went ahead and dropped. It's been moving down ever since now exceeding its lows from the previous day, or I mean the um, open there from the previous day. And then going in and looking at a couple more things, we got the ISM manufacturing that came on in, and that came out at 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock a.m. Central Time. And we can see right here that report came out, and, uh, you know, really was not, you know, that stellar, so it was a little bit better than expected, 50.7 versus 50.2. And uh, market really didn't care, it ignored it completely. And it's actually been uh, trading lower ever since that report came out this morning. So we also had construction spending came out a little lower than expected, but that's a minor impact report along with the ISM manufacturing prices. Um, came in better than expected, but again, a minor impact. So the major impact report this morning, ISM manufacturing PMI coming in at 50.7.
And basically, it's a survey where they survey 400 purchasing managers and ask them about conditions of employment, production, new orders, prices, deliveries, inventories, etc. And um, again, that number came in a little better, but uh, nothing just, you know, stellar to write home about. And uh, so the market really, like I said, did not care much about that report. We got China coming out with this non-manufacturing PMI, but that's actually a smaller number. It's not as important. Um, Japan also is on holiday today, despite that fact that yen has had no problem moving all around the board. And uh, China also has a bank holiday today. as They um, celebrate the uh, third New Year's Day. So they, they celebrate the first, the second, and the third New Year's Day. They enjoy some time off over there. And um, looking on over, checking out tomorrow, what do we got going on? Um, Spanish unemployment change number is going to come out. So as Europe starts to come back in the limelight, I think we're going to see a lot about Europe coming up uh, this year. And so we'll just keep an eye on that. But I think uh, Europe's going to be a major volatility issue this year. And then uh, going into construction PMI uh, for the pound coming out at 4.30. Again, uh, that number comes out at 4.30 a.m. Eastern time for the pound. And then we'll hop on over and we'll have ADP non-farm employment change on Thursday this week along with unemployment claims. So they're expecting the ADP non-farm employment change to uh, come in at 134,000. And that's basically the change in number of employed people during the previous month, um, excluding farming and government. So... Um, well, they've been they've revised that number quite a bit on how they calculate it. They did that a couple of months ago. We talked about it on the show. Um, 134,000 would be much better than the last number that came in at 118,000. But we'll see how that number comes out. But that will definitely be a market moving event at 8:15, and then followed up with unemployment claims right after that at 8:30. We'll also get the FSM, FOMC meeting minutes coming out at two o'clock tomorrow, and uh, that should be you know minor impact. There shouldn't be any big surprises in there. Um, the only reason I'd say to pay attention to it is just because with everything else that's going on, people are probably going to be paying a little more attention to it than normal because, again, we don't expect any big surprises coming out of that report. And then looking on over and checking out what we got going on Friday. On the panel, we have the services PMI, so they're just all about their PMI numbers uh, coming out this week. And, again, you can get most of these over on marketeconomics.com as they come out. It's M-A-R-K-I-T economics.com where they report the PMI numbers uh, across the world. So you can get all those different numbers as they are released. But uh, that's the major impact report early morning. And then we'll go in and we're going to have a lot of U.S.-Canada announcements coming out tomorrow. So uh, some of them major, some of them minor. The major one, of course, being the employment change and unemployment rate coming out of Canada at 830. And then the non-farm employment change and unemployment rate coming out at the United States at 830. So expect some major U.S.-Canadian uh, you know, volatility. And at the same time, we'll also be releasing average hourly earnings, the RMPI, the IPPI numbers out of Canada. Those are not major impact reports. The big ones you're looking at are the employment change and unemployment rate and non-farm employment change in the U.S. and Canada. And you can take advantage of those numbers doing something like a strangle with binaries or a straddle with spreads over on the Nadex platform. And a little bit later, we'll have the ISM non-manufacturing PMI coming out of the United States as well at 10 o'clock. And uh, basically, it's just, you know, it's another survey of a bunch of managers, and they're looking at everything, but they're, it's not including the manufacturing industry. So it's basically looking at everything else. And they'll rate, you know, employment, business conditions, new orders. That number is expected to come in at 54.3, slightly lower than it came in last time. And uh, last time it did exceed expectations. It has exceeded expectations on most reports. We'll see how this one comes out based on all the stuff that's just been happening in December with the fiscal cliff and, the, you know, the taxes and everything else. So as far as the fiscal cliff and taxes, of course, as we all know, fiscal cliff, uh, we went over the cliff, (laughs) but uh, they deferred the cliff. So it did uh, technically go over, and taxes did technically go up, um, but then they went back and sort of retroactivated some of the tax breaks. Of course, every American will see their taxes go up um, because of Social Security and everything else that's going to be impacting checks. But, uh, you know, they made a deal. And uh, the House, um, you know, pretty disappointed in the House and how they handled it. I mean, I'm glad we got something done. Um, at the same time, the House, you know, set a rule in place when they got um, control of the House that said that they, you know, would, based on the health care bill and how that thing was crammed through, that they would take three days to review anything and they would read it out loud on the floor and all these other things, over 150 pages of documents with all sorts of random stuff stuffed in there. And um, so the Republicans actually did not push it through. Uh, they were a minority of the vote. It was the Democrat majority that actually helped it carry it through. There was about 80 Republicans in the House that pushed it through. But, uh, you know, pretty disappointing just how that whole thing went down. So now we have two more months left over. Um, basically what they've done is they've deferred the uh, sequestering cuts, um, a.k.a. the fiscal cliff, for two months. 
and uh, which means, you know, it's really curious. Are we going to start seeing debates now or are we going to wait till three days before? <laughs> and uh, anybody's guess, you know. But uh, that, that, of course, is th- this was a warm up game. OK, these taxes have little, very little impact on the economy overall. The big impact, of course, is the debt ceiling. And so I think the Republicans went through and they just went ahead and said, hey, you know what? Let's just get this PR issue out of the way. Let's pass this. And then we're going to fight for what we really want to fight for, which is major cuts in spending. Um, And they do hold the upper hand because you have that whole debt ceiling. So we'll see if they actually stick to their guns or if they cave. If they cave, um, there will be very few Republicans reelected next round. Uh, I've already seen quite a few, uh, you know, posts and tweets and Facebooks and everything else about ones who voted for the package that uh, have already been informed by their constituents that they will not be voting for them again and will be looking to make sure they are replaced. So it'll be interesting to see how hard they fight. Uh, you know, Obama actually came out. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. And he comes out and he says, I will not have another debate with Congress over the debt ceiling. He's like, we've incurred debts and we need to pay them. And that's just how it is. You know, like he really expects in his mind that there will be no major debate. Um, and I mean, just what world does the guy live in? But you know, there's obviously going to be a debate. There better be a debate. <laughs> and uh, but he, he just wants unlimited ability to spend. And he talks about responsibility to pay the debts. He had how, but no conversation has come out about true responsibility to reduce the deficit. And um, he doesn't want to debate that. He just you know, hey, yeah, we'll we'll do some things and play some funny numbers and make it sound good and pass it along. But uh, you know, I, I, there there should be a major major debate. I don't see this getting solved easily. Because, I mean, this whole tax thing, I think, was a walk in the park compared to what's going to happen with this whole debt raising and, you know, the Republicans feeling like they got hosed over on this and everything else. Um, I think they're going to fight to the end. And so, you know, he needs to, you know, obviously wake up a little bit. There's about to be a debate. Hopefully that debate will start now and not in two months when the country runs out of money to pay its bills. Now, of course, there is one other really odd option, which would be spend less money so that way the revenue can pay the bills. But that really doesn't seem to be brought up that often. Um, anyway, so that's what we got going on right now. And uh, market really gapped up huge and hasn't done much since. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people calling on a major market rally happening um, going into the, you know, based on what's happening. Obviously, we had a big rally, you know, Monday. We had a big rally today based on the news. But that's sort of a, is that a buy, you know, buy the rumor, sell the news thing. So, um, you know, most people were calling for, you know, a big rally up. But I, there's a lot of uncertainty. We have not solved this whole debt ceiling and fiscal cliff crisis. We've simply postponed it for basically 60 days. You know, maybe a little bit longer, maybe a couple more weeks after that at most. But, uh, you know, from what most of the predictions I'm seeing from the guys that I follow that I actually trust and follow, they're seeing a pretty major downturn come around March. And uh, But, you know, who knows? The market may have some room to move, but don't know, we know what's there to make it move. The news has come out. It's done. And uh, now we're going to see what happens next. So any bad news could definitely upset it. Hold on right there. We'll be right back after this break. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Sink. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. All right, folks, welcome on here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, we're just checking a few things out right now, seeing what everything looks like. And we're going through the fundamentals, talking a little bit about that, and wrapping up on a few of the reports for the remaining week. And um, for what's going on, you know, this Friday, but uh, there's just a, you know, it's it's going to be an interesting time to trade, and so these next two weeks are going to present you with a lot of different trading opportunities, or really two months, uh, just with everything, all the debates coming out of Washington, and you're going to need to be able to limit your losses and ideally maximize your gains as well. And so I highly check out, uh, recommend that you go over to tfn.com, click on it, Nadex. And once you're over there, then click on our products and demo account. You can get set up for a demo account in a matter of about 15 seconds. Put in a username, first name, last name, phone number, and email address. Click apply for demo. And then you'll instantly be sent an email where you can sign up for a Nadex account. Also, what you want to do is go ahead and fund an account. It only takes $100 to fund an account. There's no commissions. They only have exchange fees, which are capped at uh, $0.90 cents per contract, $9 per order. So if you do 100 contracts, it's still $9 versus if you do 10, it's $9. If you do you know, one, it's 90 cents. If you do five, it's $4 and 50 cents. So, uh, but no additional commissions on top of that. Whereas the CME, you know, you're paying like say a buck 20 something, buck 23 or whatever it is for a single contract. And you can go in and you can place very low risk trades, 10, you know, five, 10, 20, $50 trades. And uh, you can go in here and just quit start. You can fund the account with as little as 100. Of course, I recommend that you put more in there than that, but you only have to have $100 to fully fund a live account. Um, the platform's free, the data's free, 
Uh, they do give you uh, charts on Forks. They also give you the ability to look at master spread charts, which are you know pretty close to the underlying market. Um, and then you can look at the spread charts, the binary charts, you know everything that goes with the Nadex platform. All of that is visible for you um, as soon as you sign up. It only takes about five minutes from clicking start to being funded and being able to access your account. So uh, go ahead and check that out today, and you'll be able to learn you know more about that. Now, if you're looking to go, well, how do the binaries and spreads work? Well, hop over there, grab a demo account, possibly grab a live account as well, and then go over here and check out our two-week free trial of the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer. I give you tutorials on Nadex binaries, tutorials on Nadex spreads, tutorials on the Nadex platform, and I also give you access to my live trading tool that I use for picking spreads when I'm trading, um, which does all the math for you. So there can be literally, you know, 26 different choices to choose from. Uh, so when you're ready to buy or sell, which one do you choose? And this helps you narrow down your choices in a matter of a couple of seconds because it's feeding all the data in live from the Nadex Exchange and it's doing all the math on the information that's important to you, such as how much time is left till expiration, how far does that have to be to be break even, what is your total risk on the trade, what's your reward potential on the trade. Um, if you want to use it to hedge Nadex spreads, one of my favorite strategies, hedging spreads. Uh, or hedging like futures and forks with spreads. It shows you the exact ratio on that and what the risk would be on the trade. Um, and so, and what the break even distance would be on that trade as well. Plus you get access to the deviation levels and um, I load those up every night and they're extremely helpful. And you're able to log in and see them right away. And let me go ahead, I'll log in, I'll show them to you. We'll go through a few of the deviation levels for the day. And they can be really good for take profit points, turning points and things of that sort. And um, so right here, bring this up on the screen for you, and we'll look at them. So as soon as you uh, sign up, you'll be able to log in, get access to the deviation levels. You just click right here, get access to the current levels, and they're posted for you. And uh, then you can plot them on your charts, use them however you want to. You know, you may use all instruments, you may use just a few of the instruments, but again, very, very helpful. And so we'll, let's go ahead and do a quick walkthrough on a few of the markets. So uh, we'll start off here with the S&P. And with the S&P, you can see right here, moved up to a perfect two deviation on Friday, did the same, or Monday, did the same thing this morning, moved right on up, opened up, I mean, extremely high, already at one and a half deviation, basically bounced off the two deviation level, broke it a little bit, came on back down, and it looks like it's working on possibly pushing down towards that one and a half deviation. So what does this deviation thing mean, okay? Well, one, when you're looking at any kind of deviation, whether it be standard deviation or implied deviation, which is what I use, um, it's important to understand what the percentages mean. So a one deviation move means there's basically only a 32% chance that it'll break through that level. Okay, so ideally, <laughs> except for when you have days like today where it gaps past it, you're really not expecting the market to move more than one deviation. And I can go back and we can look at literally, you know, previous days. And you can see, you know, it moves down to one, actually had one and a half with quite a bit of volatility there. Right here, it moved down literally to one deviation perfectly, which is what you expect on most days. Bounce back to, up to settlement. Here, uh, basically got to move up to a basically a 0.7. Didn't even quite move to a full one deviation. And then, you know, right over here, let's see. To move this one down. This is a slow day there. And uh, moved down a whopping 3% there. There's just that massive day there. I want to say that was... Yeah, that Friday before Christmas, we with that big move, and it bounced right back up instantly. And uh, so I'm going to go a little bit more into these and the percentages and what they do and how you can help them, or how you can use them to help you in your trading. So this is one of the biggest pieces missing in most people's trading, and I'll show you how it works right after this break. Stay tuned. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air and you've seen him on Tiger TV as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor. And now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m. and provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. Uh, I got a request over the to check out natural gas. Crazy spike this morning, thing down to 3.05. That's not even in the realm of statistics. So I don't even know what that is, like five or six deviations. That is absolutely insane. Um, a lot of people, I'm sure, got nailed on that one early this morning. But I uh, moved on to 305. So, of course, I you know don't really recommend ever trading natural gas outside of the normal hours just because <laughs> you, know, you may want to hop in maybe a few minutes before the pit opens. But, you know, stuff like this is just, I mean, that's horrible. That's just a insanely massive move. Um, but looking on over and narrowing it down, it looks like for the day, uh, it looks like a lot of the the umph is sort of out of it at the moment. It basically did a, did a big retracement, pulled back, basically about a fifty percent off that big move right there. Let's see, we can go in and throw just a you know quick fib on just a you know recent high to low there, and there we go. Yeah, it basically came right down to about fifty percent and flattened out right around that fib level. But also, if I go in and let's just pull up the way I like to analyze over here. And on our deviations, not accounting for the crazy spike, uh, then it's uh, moved down basically sitting just above uh, three deviation levels right there. So and uh, so go ahead and like I said, we were talking about the deviations before we left, and this is really rare. Uh, of course, everything that's happening on today is rare. This doesn't you know happen right. So um, on a consistent, fortunately on a consistent basis, that almost feels like it's the new norm lately. But uh, three deviation move, meaning hitting a three deviation mark, there is literally a 0.3 percent chance. It'll break out of that level, 
meaning there's 99.7% chance that it'll stay within this level by day's end at least. And uh, so as you can see, even though it did have that crazy spike, it gave that up right away, moved on down, and has pulled on back up since, and uh, staying within that 99.7% chance. Now, you don't usually want to trade towards these levels. Uh, your goal is not to expect it to move. You know, you don't basically expect it to get that far, okay? Your expectation is usually to go for one deviation. But what do you do when the market's just flying like this? How can you take advantage of that? Well, as it hits each deviation, you can tighten your stop. You can tighten it on the most recent bar that broke it is one method. Um, you could also use, like, I use Apex Power Lines, but you could do them, like, right here. You could, you know, as it's going down, it hits another level. You could tighten it again here. Comes down, doesn't hit this level, comes back up, would have knocked you out of the trade. You still would have got a really, really nice trade right there on natural gas. So as far as, you know, the long haul on natural gas, just looking at it overall. And uh, let's go ahead and max that out and pull it out here. And we can see, you know, our low to our high. And we'll do, oh, I don't have my fibs on this one. There we go. So we got a Fibonacci retracement level here. And now we can zoom in a little bit on that. We can see it actually came right down to the 38.2% Fib level. So definitely a, uh, you know, I mean, you can tell how it stopped here. Boom, hit 23.6 and moved on down, came back up to the 23.6, came on back down to 38.2, looking like it might want to try to pull off a 50% retracement with a move further on down to 3.953. So if it does go in and it does break this level over here, so let's check this out. If it does break 3.166, um, you know, maybe 3.16 you know, or whatever, then we could definitely look for a move on down to uh, 2.953 over on natural gas. And uh, just looking at, you know, I like to go in and sort of check out the volume bars and where everything's at. You can see this was a major high volume bar right here. Okay. So let me hop on over here. We'll do this. So we got this high volume bar right here. And up here, we got sort of the same thing going on. And so that high volume bar basically acting as a magnet level. And so it did come over here and hit that and then pulled back up, came back down to it, came back up and then hit it. But it busted through it um, pretty hard, but not with higher volume yet. We'll have to see how the day ends up. But we did not break the low of this bar right here on high volume. And that's really what we'd be expecting. We expect to break the low uh, 3.232 on high volume. So since we haven't done that, there's not just an incredible amount of commitment. We do still have the rest of the day, though, to see how it, you know, it pans out. And then let's see here. We can hop on over a little bit further. You know, obviously we got moves back up here. That's way too high. And just looking at, you know, across the board, this does definitely seem to be an area of support and resistance right now. It's 38.2. You can see how it was resistance for quite a while. It busted through. It became support and uh, came down held as a support line until it finally broke through it went back down here to the 50 percent retracement level didn't really go much further um just really you know stayed on that line it moved up here and sort of around this and then boom came up just hesitated for a little bit at 23.6 before of course making its full uh, move up there so basically the next move if we can get some volume the movement would be expected down to 2.953 and at the speed this thing goes i mean it could cover that literally in a matter of a day or two so um, if you are going to trade something like this you may want to check out nadex and let me show you something over on the Nadex platform um, that you could do. Let's say you're looking at taking a position on something like this. And let me put this. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's uh, pull up natural gas. All right. And what you could do is they have weekly binaries. All right, and so this might be something you want to take advantage of if you're thinking, hey, you know, I think it might go down the next day or two and hit this level. Then we could go back over to our chart and go, okay, well, we think it might go down to, you know, 2.953. And we can see on here, 2.950, all right, $91. Well, why would we choose that if we can choose the 3.050 at also $91, okay? So same risk. Um, when you're looking at the bid side on a binary in Nadex, that's your profit potential, okay? So $91 profit potential. The lowest you can buy it back at is zero. So you sell it at 91, buy it back at zero, okay? And when you're looking at the offside, you're looking at the risk on a buy, so buying it for 90, the highest you can sell it for is 100, all right? So $81 profit potential, um, or actually $91 profit potential, $9 risk. So if you thought it could actually go down and hit that level, if you think it might actually bounce all the way down to 3.53 in the next couple of days, then a low risk trade you could do, you could put this on and it actually would work and uh, go through, like I said, this actually will expire um, on January 4th, okay? 
at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. But you can go in here and you can put a trade on this and put on, you know, if you put a couple on and you want more to keep, you know, put in 10 and they'll just keep working until they fill them for you. Um, you go and put the trade on. I mean, if we put a couple on there, that's $182. And so if it does get down and hit that level, that's a great trade. Now, maybe we don't think, you know, we're not sure if it'll actually finish down there. Because if you put it on and you hold it till Friday, you're saying it will finish below 3.050. All right. But maybe you think it'll just get to 3.050 or, you know, maybe it'll get to 3.2953. That's pretty close. So you could go in there and you could actually put an order in once you submitted it. And I'll go ahead and we'll just throw this trade on. I'll show you an example. So we'll do place order right here. And then um, once you do that, then now you can go in and pull up. Let me pull this up over here. A position. Um, just by clicking on the open, the uh, actual, you got to open positions, pull up your own positions. And then you can put in an order to buy it back down at $50. Okay. So I'll go ahead and put that order in there and then that'll be working for you. So if it does get down to that price level, then you'll be able to... Uh, basically get in the trade and get out of the trade at 50 bucks, risking $9, making a 400% return if it does get down to that price level. So it's just a, a simple way to trade um, natural gas over a longer period of time. And then for a shorter period of time, you can also check out the spreads. Um, and, you know, the binary you can do for a shorter period of time too. You can do from two hours to literally a week. On the spreads, you can go over here and you can pull up their spreads. They have natural gas and you can check out. And this is more like trading the underlying market. So this is like going in here and literally trading the natural gas market has moved so much lately that there's just not a whole lot in there. But you could definitely go in and look at it and see, you know, if you thought a buy or a sell it was an order, you know, where do you think would be the best opportunity to actually place a trade? And so um, one of the other things you can do is you can go over to the TFNN site. And if you do have access to the diagnostic box spread analyzer, then you'd be able to go in and I'll pull it up for you. I'll show you exactly how that works. And you can go in here and go to the box spread scanner click on spread scanner and then pull up natural gas say so just click on natural gas right there and let's see here and it'll show you all the different natural gas spreads that currently exist that you can take advantage of and then you go in and say well you know what I don't want to risk more than say a hundred dollars so you could go in there and put a hundred and then narrow it down for you immediately and then you go in and see what trades are currently existing um, they give you you know a good you know risk reward ratio so you know, here's a trade right here. It's risking, you know, 80 bucks to make a potential $414 um, on the way down. This one's risking 30 to make 185. This one's risking 11 to make 385. And what this does for is it shows you, okay, how much time is left till expiration, and then also it shows you how far does it have to move to be break even. Okay, this one only has to move like 0.06. Okay, what is the risk on the trade? $31. What's the reward potential on the trade? And so, you know, when you line all that up, you can find some really, really good trades. I mean, on the sell side, um, you got ones right here, only has to move four pips to be break even, $83 risk. And this is probably one of the most important features, I wanna highlight this for you, is it'll show you, because sometimes there's two trades with the same um, risk reward, or same risk, but better reward on a different trade. So this trade right here is risking $85. This trade right here is risking $85. They both only have to move, you know, say six, uh, 0 0.006 to be break even, okay? They both only have 45 minutes until expiration, but this one can make 317, this one can make 417. So same time to expiration, same distance to break even, exact same risk, um, and this one can make more money. And I mean, look at this, here's one that expires in 15 minutes. Same distance to break even, same risk, but the reward is only $113. So why would you choose a trade that has $83 or $84 of risk that can only make $112 and only has 15 minutes of expiration when you could choose one that can make $316 and has 45 minutes? Why would you choose one that has $316 and 45 minutes when you can find one that can make $416 in the next you know, 45 minutes here? So you know, it, it lets you easily identify and go, okay, that is not the best one for me to sell. And um, you know, this one has to move 37 ticks. I'm not interested in that at all. And so what I'll do is I'll go in and I'll highlight them. Let's say I just know I want to sell. So I'll click sell. I'll highlight all of them. And I'll go, okay, I don't want that one because it has to move 35 ticks. This one has the same risk as these three. Less money, less time. Let's get rid of that one. Okay, these two have the same time. These two have the same break-even distance. These two have the exact same risk. I think I'm going to go ahead and choose the one, obviously, with the most profit potential. So I do that, and there is my spread. And then I can literally simply click on the sell button. 
And what it will do is it'll actually open the ticket for me in the Nadex platform automatically. So now I just literally hit place order and it'll put my trade on for me. And uh, this actually calculates in exchange fees and everything for you. So it helps make it really simple. And uh, basically all the numbers that you need to know, all the math that you need to know is doing it and it's updating it live in real time. So that way, uh, you know, basically every second it's doing an update and you can see right there, even on the ticket, um, how it will update it really, really fast for you. And uh, like 219, 219, 221. So as the price changes, it'll automatically update in here inside the server. And it makes it really simple because otherwise if you find the right spread, then you have to go through and you have to go, okay, well now I want to find the right spread. I want to trade that natural gas 2800 or 3300, 230. And so you're over here and you're going, let's see, 230, 2800, oh, I can't find it there. And you're going through, oh, there it is. Okay, now I found it. So now you're trying to find it. You finally find it, but you spend time doing that. I can do it quick because I know where everything's at. But what if you go here and you're like, all right, commodities. Uh, it's, I think it's commodity, yeah. And uh, natural gas, okay. Expires at 230. Okay, it's not on that page. Um, expires at 230. Okay, that th there it is. Okay, now I'm going to click here. Now I gotta put in my quantity and now I can place my order. So you can do it that way, or you literally can just hit sell and the ticket pops up for you. So it makes it really fast, really easy for you to be able to trade with limited risk. And I mean natural gas can obviously move a lot. It's moved three percent today. I should move more than that earlier. And uh, maybe it's even four percent. I'm not even sure. It's just a massive move on natural gas. And so you wanna have uh, definitely a defined way on how you're gonna trade it. Yeah, it's at three point eight right now, percent down for the day. So definitely the biggest mover. And um, it was even further down. But uh, this gives you a safer way, okay? Obviously, you know, everything has risk, but it gives you a safer way because the risk is defined. The biggest thing on this, okay? And here's the number one thing you want to understand when you're looking at these spreads. If we go over and I pull up natural gas, and this is a 2,800 to 3,300 spread, okay? Then I can go over here, drag this thing way down here. But... Uh, Go in here and just, I'll add a drawing tool called a rectangle. Okay, you can do this on almost any charting platform. And let's see, so we got rectangle. And then, by the way, if you need to know how to get access to you know charts and data and all that stuff for free, just uh, email me at dmartin at tfnn.com. I'll be glad to help you out. But uh, we got 2800 to 3200. I want to make sure I do have the right one right there. And uh, but you can chart it on the platform where you can see it. So again, it's 2800. So, or what would that be here? 2.8. All right, and 3.8. And it's expiring at 2.30. Okay, so 2.30. Hit apply. And um, that actually lets me see, actually, it's 3300. There we go. Um, it'll actually let me see the box, as I call them, box spreads. On the chart. Well, why do I call them box spreads? Because you got where you get in, okay, you got where it expires, you have the ceiling, and you have the floor. If you put all that on there, you can see the box. And here's what's really cool about this is you can't lose money outside the box. All right. So if I go in here and I put this trade on, and the risk on the trade is currently 79 bucks, okay, then no matter how how high natural gas goes, I will not lose more than $79 on this trade. And even if it spikes way up against me but comes back down, then I could lose less than 79 or actually end up making money by the end, meaning I can't get spiked out of a trade. I don't have to have a stop loss because the trade is my stop. The box is my stop. And I can make money, of course, all the way down to this point. Give me a $421 prop potential on a $79 risk. So it's a very, very cool way to trade. You can learn more about that inside the diagnostic box spread section on TFNN. But uh, stay right there, folks. We'll be right back after this break. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain in this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of
of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor, Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, so I want to go ahead and get through one more example on here that I think is pretty significant. Um, just to point this out to you on the spread scanner, if you would have hopped in on natural gas... And let's just say you were trading last night. And um, you look right here and you're like, hey, this is one deviation level. I'll, you know, I'll buy when it bounces off of that, that type of thing. You're doing a reversal trade, whatever. You think it's going to you know, get exhausted. You see a big volume, whatever. You think you're, you're ready to go long. And you want to buy this. I don't care who you are. You got stopped out, okay? Um, or you got wiped out. Or you just you had a heart attack and you know, you're know like you know praying to the trading gods, being so happy that you're back to break even if you held on to it the entire time. Um but you should have got stopped out if you were trading correctly, meaning you had stop losses. If you had an 8x spread, okay, and you went and you bought this spread, and let's say you bought it right around the 0.7 or 1 deviation, you went and you buy the spread, this thing goes against you. Let's say you're risking, you know, 80 bucks to make $420 on the trade. It flies against you. You were never down more than $80. Your trade is still open. You cannot lose more than $80. Well, natural gas takes its sweet little time, but it moves on back up. And you bought it right here at this one deviation point. It moves on back up. And in the end, you actually are able to potentially actually profit on this trade. Whereas you, I mean, would have had a very difficult time doing that. It moves up. You take a profit when it comes back up and basically fills the gap, the settlement right there, fills the gap, and you get out of the trade. 
something you could not have done trading outright futures, okay? And so this just gives you just an excellent example to show you the value of trading Natick spreads and binary sort of shows you why I like trading them so much because even a bad day is not that bad of a day. You can come back from it pretty quick, pretty easily. Um, and this is just one perfect example. You know, we showed you the example of using the scanner to help you find the easiest spread in seconds. And then, of course, here's an example of showing you the power of a Natick spread from protecting you against market spikes. And we're going to see a lot of crazy things happen over the next couple of months. And uh, it's just nice knowing that if this happens, it doesn't kick you out of the trade. And um, again, this is a great trade. It's a one deviation retracement. You could have got in there, came back up, got out of the trade. And, you know, maybe you went around and you went short later or maybe you straddled it. But either way, um, you would have been, you know, protected, meaning your risk was defined the entire time and you didn't have to worry about getting stopped out. So hopefully that's something you can walk away with. It piques your curiosity. It's, it's my favorite way to trade. That is one of the number one reasons why is that chart right there. Um, and I mean, this is just breaking every statistical model, you know, and when it finally closed it, on, in the one minute, I mean, that happened in a minute. Okay. This is like you had time to adjust. So, and it probably happened, you know, if we go down to ticks, I mean, you're probably talking seconds, but I mean, in one minute, that thing dropped basically, you know, more than three, like four, like I said, four, maybe five deviations, um, which is like a point zero 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 one chance that could even happen. And that's a black swan event, you could call it. And this is a way to avoid that. So that's why I share. That's why I push it so much because it helps you as a trader. And uh, there's so many a trades that I've taken. I'm sure there are many trades that you have taken that you wish you would have had a spread on um, versus having on an outright future or forex contract, especially when it's crazy stuff like this comes out. Um, anyway, so you know that's just one of the many things I want to share with you. We'll go ahead. Let's do a quick market wrap on where everything is at right now and uh pull it on up and let's see here we got the s p is still up 25 points the nasdaq's up 62 the dow is up 232 and the russell's up 22. not seeing any major moves or changes as of yet we'll see what happens by the end of the day but they're oscillating right now we got the russell oscillating right around a two deviation level and uh, i'll pull that up for you right there you can see it's sort of just basically bouncing up and down on that two deviation mark and um, after it broke through it this morning. So could I move on back down? And you got, um, what's the NAP back there? You got the Russell uh, coming right up to the two deviation mark. And then you got the Dow also over here, hit two deviations perfectly, moved on back down. We'll see where all ends up by the end of the day. Either way, trade smart, trade with good leverage, but defined risk. Check that over on NADAX. And if you have any questions, let me know. You can email me or call me. Stay tuned, we have another great show coming up for you right after this. Let me tell you something, folks. Yes. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success and it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability, because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today, because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away.